स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कंजर्वेशन लॉ ना व्हाट इज कंजर्वेशन लॉ एंड व्हाई इज इट सो इम्पॉर्टेंट एसेंशियली वी विल टॉकिंग अबाउट समथिंग व्हिच इज इन मैथमेटिकली स्पीकिंग इट्स अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर इक्वेशन ओके सो इक्वेशन विल लुक लाइक दिस यू टी प्लस एफ ऑफ यू एक्स इक्वल्स टू जीरो एंड यू एट द पॉइंट एक्स जीरो इज लेट्स से P of x, okay. Here x is in R and p greater than zero, right? So this is the problem which we want to study. Now, this is of course a first order equation because the highest degree term is like uh, only uh, one, right? And uh, see here if we can assume for now that f is smooth, okay? So for uh, now. Assume, assume. So f is smooth. If can be, it can be c one c infinity. Okay. So f is smooth. That's all our assumption is smooth. Okay. From R to R. So f is defined from R to R. Okay. So f is a smooth function. Now, uh, or I mean, it can be from some open interval R, but essentially it is always assumed to be R to R, right? Okay. Now. Have we seen this sort of problem? Of course we did. Yes. Now let now let f of u is u square by two. Yes. Now you do realize that this is a very valid problem here. f of u can be taken by u, to be u square by two because that's a smooth function. Okay. Once you take that, then. One becomes. Becomes u t plus u u x equals to zero. U at the point x zero is v of x. Okay. Let's say that's your two. Now, what do you think? Have you seen this problem hmm, too? Of course we did. What did we saw? This is called a Burgers equation. Two is called is called the Burgers equation. Okay, and you remember we have solved this too, yes. And by solving it means that we have found um, Burgers equation, and so I don't remember the exact video, but we talked about a problem. Uh, I mean, uh, we talked about a particular fee. So basically, we showed that, and uh, we showed, okay, we showed. In an earlier video, okay, I don't remember exactly which video was it, but anyways, it was the last video of where we discussed the quasi-linear case, okay, uh, first order quasi-linear case. Uh, we showed via the method of characteristics, right? Method of characteristics, characteristics that to admits a solution. Admits a solution. Okay, no. By solution, I mean not global. Ah, huh? it is not a like a global solution. Okay, because we have seen that if you remember uh, the, for some fee. Yes, I don't ex exactly right now. Uh, I mean. Remember what uh, that a, a fee is, but most probably fee x equals to x in that case. Okay, the problem was uh, uh, so this is this is like uh, don't hold me for to it. I mean I am like a ninety nine percent sure that uh, if you take fee x to be x, huh? Uh, you can see that the characteristics the characteristics of two okay intersect. Yes, as far as I remember. Otherwise, you have to work it out. Okay. But uh, probably I uh, I did v x equals to x only that case okay and uh, you can you can see that the characteristic intersect. What happens when the characteristic intersect? Uh, uh, the points where the characteristic intersect, you can no longer define the solution, right? That's what we learned. Okay, characteristic intersects and 
the points where they intersect they intersect one can no longer define no longer define a solution okay so so um, let us understand again what i am trying to do so it becomes very clear what we will do it right now okay if you take this example f u to be u square by 2 you um, one turns out to be our familiar equation which is a burger equation so this is an example of a quasi linear pd right first order first order pd clear quasi linear first order pd now you see to the the pd2 that is a burger equation yes and uh, um, with phi of x to be x a very very simple uh, you know this thing example phi x to be x if you take this example you can see that the characteristics of 2 okay um, I, I am uh, i don't remember what are the characteristics of 2 but anyway what are the, whatever the characteristics of 2 are they intersect okay and um, the point where they intersect you cannot longer define a solution right okay so basically the solution which you are getting is not a global solution it's not like defined in whole r cross t positive right okay so and here one very important thing which we need to remember is you see uh, when we say that um, there it admits a solution huh? very important thing there admits a solution okay very very important what do i mean by solution you need to understand what is a solution okay so solution can be two parts so in this case the earlier case which we talked about till now in this course okay so by a let me write it down i will call it a classical solution of one okay you guys already know what does it mean it means that u is in c classical solution of two let's say huh? u is in c2 of r cross zero infinity such that u satisfies satisfies true everywhere right everywhere in r cross zero infinity that's the natural uh, thing to say you, whenever we say oh, what do we mean by a solution of course we mean that is a classical solution so what i what does that mean see for a u to satisfy this equation ut ux u all of this has to be continuous right for this all of this to be continuous it means so basically you need u ux ut to be continuous okay this is continuous means u is in c1 clear so that's your classical solution this is a solution which we will call a classical solution okay now in this part conservation law part we are going to uh, you know define our solutions a little bit different so this is a little advanced topic okay so what is our aim in this lecture our aim is to define define the notion of weak solution notion of weak solution okay so the first question is why do we need a notion of weak solution because uh, you do realize why do we need a new new concept because this is just the same kind of idea because classical solutions are most often than not not very easy to derive you understand what i'm trying to say classical solutions are not very easy to derive which we'll just look at it right now okay but uh, by first defining what's a weak solution so basically uh, let's define a weak solution definition okay i'm defining it for, a, for this problem you can define it for i mean any od or pd yes okay the idea is same so definition is this let so u okay u that's the function u so u is said to be a weak solution of one to be a weak solution of one okay weak solution of one right if zero to infinity minus infinity to infinity okay u v t plus f of u v x 
dx dt so this is complicated na plus minus infinity to infinity v of x v of x0 dx equals to 0 so this particular relation holds so let's call this relation as 3 3 holds for all v which is in cc infinity r cross 0 infinity okay so essentially you take a, a cc infinity function in the upper half space and what do you want you want uh, this particular relation to hold okay so this is an arbitrary relation it looks like right now okay but it is not uh, we will explain it later so for now let us just re understand what we just wrote okay so we were given this equation right what is our equation ut plus f of u times x equals to 0 and uh, there is a boundary condition okay so now what we are doing is we are saying that you have a solution if see initially for a solution to exist you need u ux ut to exist right in our case what we are saying for u is a weak solution of one is if u satisfies this particular condition for all v which is in cc infinity array okay let's look at this condition see here u there is a double integral whatever it is don't worry about it u vt plus f of u vx huh? one thing to notice here is there is a u here there is a u here right u here there is a u here but it does not contain any derivative for now yes okay what about here here of course minus infinity to infinity you have phi is there so there is no u okay phi is given to us so we don't have to worry about it there is no u so essentially you see we have defined uh, um, some kind of relation okay i am not coming to how we define it right now huh? we'll just do it uh, after this yes but for now see we defined a relation we are saying something is a solution okay but we are not using that sort of regularity so initially we need u to be at least in c1 okay derivative u has the derivatives of u ut ux all of those has to exist here if you are using this definition 3 then you see you do not need u to be differentiable no if you if you see see uh, you are just taking some integral so basically if u is continuous and bounded that all that is also good enough if you if you can think of it like this that is also good enough right i mean you do not even need uh, differentiability actually you do not even need continuity okay because you are just taking some derivatives okay for function so basically even discontinuous functions are fine okay as long as they are differentiable of course okay so essentially you see uh, what we are doing see initially let's say this is our uh, this is our you know set where we wanted to find solution okay now what we are doing is we are going to define we are defining although it does not look like this we will just commit to that we are do actually want to define a much bigger set okay so think about it if you want to find a solution okay i give you a small set i give you a much bigger set which contains the small set okay and if i'm asking you in which uh, set do, can you find a solution of course you will go for the bigger one okay that is a safe bet you see the bigger one has much more functions right so essentially if you look at the bigger one there is the chance of getting a solution is much easier okay and also this solution does not have too many restrictions right okay the other one has a ton of restrictions okay so this is called a weak solution clear that uh, u, u is said to be a weak solution if uh, this happens 0 to infinity minus infinity to infinity u v t plus f of u v x okay so you see all the derivative is going to uh, the you know the test function this function v okay so v is infinity you don't have to worry about it so you just put the all the derivatives on it and there is another term which in, deals with the boundary if that happens then that is called a weak solution okay to be very fair here now if you ask me that what is this u why are we not putting this u okay so i will write this u as this c so here uh, this is like a small remark we here we assume u is in l infinity rn cross 0 infinity okay sorry 
zero infinity so what do i mean by this i mean that uh, this is uh, basically uh, so it means that it is bounded function okay if you know re, uh, only you know you do not know measure theory then um, just think of this as bounded functions bounded functions in rn cross infinity it need not be continuous of course it, it has to be summable okay bounded and summable functions so let me put it this way bounded and summable huh? summable and if you know measure theory of course you know what l infinity is okay so uh, um, so essentially we are only looking for in 10 terms we are only looking for bounded and summable functions such that the relation 3 holds if that happens then we say that solution is called a weak solution clear okay now let's come to the fact that how did we suddenly derive it and why is so special so as i told you that we are looking for a in a much bigger set right we are looking in a set which is like a l infinity set not only in c1 so c1 and this is l infinity okay so uh, let let us put that thing it into context so we talk about a theorem here if u is a classical solution classical solution of uh, one okay then u is a weak solution of one okay so what does it mean it means that if you let's say that uh, so what is the relation between weak and classical solution so it says that of course if you can find a weak solution uh, sorry if you can find a classical solution okay uh, i mean I, I, i'm not specifying how you find it of course you can find a classical solution by using method of characteristic in some plots okay so let's just assume that you have found a classical solution okay that will actually instantly imply that that's a weak solution okay now that is what we need to prove okay and that is how you will also understand how this uh, formulation of weak solution is coming okay so let's say that let's look at the proof of this thing so if so of course by classical solution what do i mean i mean u is in c1 right okay and what u does is it, it does ut of xt plus f of u of xt okay with respect to x that is equals to 0 for t greater than equal 0 and u at the point x0 is phi of x clear and it is phi of x clear so let's uh, write it like a 4 this happens this happens for all x in r a r and t greater than 0 clear okay for every point you have this there is a u which does this okay now of course we are taking f to be uh, smooth function so you can break this also up which is will give you by chain rule f prime so if you break it up or equivalently this also means that this is this ut of xt plus f prime if you you know f is a r to r function by chain rule f prime of u of xt okay and then you have ux of xt okay is equals to 0 so that also you can write it and you at the point x0 is phi of x if you want you can write it like this okay but uh, i mean uh, this is just for your information we don't need it okay okay now see once that four is um, i mean true then uh, as you let f uh, you have a v which is like a c c uh, infinity of r cross zero infinity clear so we are just assuming a function which is uh, uh, which is uh, a c infinity function okay with a compact support what does it mean it means that v is equivalent to zero okay outside outside some compact set compact set and where is this compact set it is in this r cross zero infinity okay in r cross zero infinity clear okay let we assume is a smooth function with something like this okay 
now if it happens then i will multiply v with this particular term okay so if you multiply it you see ut plus f of u times x okay multiply it by v integrate it between x running from minus infinity to infinity t running from 0 to infinity clear this is equals to 0 okay so that is there now once this is there i can use integration by parts here integration by parts clear okay and of course i can change the uh, this uh, order of the integrals also okay so by using integration by parts and uh, fubini if you want okay i am not quite sure whether you guys know fubini or not otherwise whatever you know how you, you change your integral we are using that uh, um, you know how do i put it uh, formula okay so once you do that what happens is let's say let's look at the first expression okay zero so minus infinity to infinity zero to infinity u t v okay that can be written like this no my zero to inf minus infinity to infinity zero to infinity u v t d t d x okay i can write it like this integration by parts okay but there is a boundary term if you remember there is a boundary term okay what is the boundary term plus the boundary term is minus infinity to infinity okay u v okay t so 0 to infinity dx so t i am just putting t equals to 0 to infinity dx right so u is x t v of x t from 0 to infinity and uh, t running between 0 to infinity dx huh? so that is the first term plus let's look at the second term here also for the second term i uh, it is 0 to infinity okay minus infinity to infinity this derivative can be dropped in v so f of u times vx okay dx dt okay if i do that but there is a boundary term here again 0 to infinity minus infinity oh, okay so but the boundary term here will be f of u times v okay uh, between minus infinity to infinity and t that is equals to 0 here yeah. this is just integration by parts in one dimension i am just i am not doing anything so one by one okay first of all this expression and then for this expression clear yeah. okay so once i do that let's understand what is happening here okay what is happening here see if evaluated at u u at so basically if you break this up this particular term will look like this no f of u of x comma t okay this kind of thing times v of x comma t now this is evaluated for x is minus infinity to x equals to plus infinity right okay now you see uh, the thing is uh, i don't know what u does at the infinity okay that is not our case but the thing is i know that v has a compact support outside uh, you know it has a compact support so basically v is zero outside a compact set okay so basically for x equals to plus infinity minus infinity if you go to plus infinity minus infinity what happens is this term goes to zero right so v is essentially zero at plus or minus infinity okay as x goes to infinity of course it has uh, a compact support okay of course it is zero so basically this term is gone i, I hope this is clear v has a compact support means v is zero outside some compact set right so of course as x if you evaluate x between minus infinity to infinity okay x between minus infinity to infinity v is going to be zero so this particular term has no contribution in our case okay now here let's look at this boundary term this boundary term if you if you break it up it will be like this u restricted to u at the point x t v at the point x t okay evaluated at 0 infinity so this is t equals to 0 and t equals to infinity clear if you put t equals to infinity in this thing of course this again v or v at uh, I mean as t goes to infinity goes to 0 because again v is a compact support function so after you know after a bounded set it is essentially 0 so if you take t towards infinity that is going to be 0 
so uh, you don't have to worry about it anymore so essentially one part of this is zero so you are only left out with v u u v evaluated at t equals to zero this is evaluated t equals to zero uh, the v might be there okay t equals to zero but uh, at infinity is not there so basically that particular term is there so with a negative term negative sign clear okay okay so let's just put all of this together and write it down uh, properly therefore what happens is it becomes zero to infinity infinity to minus infinity to infinity okay u v t plus f of u v x d x d t plus minus infinity to infinity phi of x okay why phi of x because you see minus u so u at the point x 0 t equals to 0 x 0 and v at the point x 0 right this term the boundary term u at the point x 0 is given to be what is it phi of x right so that is why uh, it is phi of x times v at the point x 0 dx equals to 0 okay so this is true uh, so you you understand so this, this is the case and this is true this relation is true for any v so here for, and the above is true is true for any v in c infinity c c infinity of r n cross 0 infinity okay therefore by our definition therefore u is a weak solution of one okay you use a solution of one so now i i hope that this is clear to you how all of this is uh, you know derived so essentially let us again recall because this is a little advanced uh, topic yeah uh, so we are talking uh, taking some time here c u first of all is a classical solution means c1 solution so it has to satisfy the equation at every point please remember this thing very important the first thing is this whenever you are talking about a classical solution classical solution has to satisfy the equation at every point xt in the domain wherever you are working right for every point very important here i am not saying for every point see if you have a function v at the uh, 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 you are saying it is integrable does that mean that it has to be you know kind of uh, uh, differentiable um, at every point it does not mean right it may not be differentiable at every point so you don't have to worry about all of that okay so essentially what am i saying is i just need v to be um, a cis infinity function u to be a l infinity function what do i mean by l infinity i mean that it has to be bounded so here if you remember i am just asking for a bounded function and a summable function so that you know you can talk about the integral properly okay once you have that i don't worry about also continuity so v the solution may, may be discontinuous also but so and essentially you see the since this definition the so what is the difference between the other the classical and the weak definition the classical definition is it it takes the uh, account the derivatives right so you have to talk about derivatives so hence you need c1 the second definition weeks definition does not talk about derivative but what does it do it talks about the integrals the special thing about integrals is you do not always need a continuous function or a c1 function to do that right so you only need closed and bounded okay so that is why this is very uh, sorry not closed and bounded the summable and bounded okay summable and bounded to define it so that is the special thing about weak solution okay so this is a much bigger class of function why bigger class because we have seen that let's say any classical solution let's say this is the classical solution this is weak solution any classical solution um, is a uh, weak solution right so that is why it is in a much bigger space okay so let us end it here